I won't comment on the three companies that you've named, but in, in general terms, unless you find the, the prices of a great company really offensive, if you, if you feel you've identified it, and by definition, a great company is one that's going to remain great for 30 years. If it's going to be great, a great company for three years, you know, it ain't a great company. I mean, it, uh, uh, so you really want to go along with the, uh, the idea of something that if you were going to take a trip for 20 years, you wouldn't feel bad leaving, leaving uh, uh, the money in with no orders with your broker and no power of attorney or anything, and you just go on the trip and you know you come back and it's going to be a, a terribly strong company. Uh, I think it's better just to own them. I mean, you know, we could, uh, we could attempt to buy and sell some of the things that, that we own that we think are fine businesses, but they're too hard to find. I mean, we, we found C's Candy in 1972 where we find here and there we get the opportunity to do something, but they're too hard to find. So to, to sit there and hope that you buy them in the, in the throes of some panic, uh, you know, that you'd sort of take the attitude of a, of a, uh, a mortician, you know, waiting for a flu epidemic or something. I mean, it, it, I'm not sure that, that uh, I'm not sure that will be a great technique. I mean, it may, it may be great if you inherit, you know, Paul Getty inherited the money at the bottom in 32. I mean, I, he didn't inherit it exactly. He talked his mother out of it, but, but, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true, actually. Close uh, enough. Yeah, close it up, right? But. He, uh, he benefited enormously uh, by, by having access to a lot of cash in, 19, in the early 30s that he didn't have access to in the, in the late 20s. And so you'd get some accidents like that. Uh, but that's, that's a lot to count on. And you know, if you start with the Dow at X and, you're, and you're, you think it's too high, you know, when it goes to 90% of X, do you buy? Well, if it does and it goes to 50% of X, it gets... Uh, uh, you know, you, ne you never get the benefit of those extremes anyway, unless you just come into some accidental sum of money at some time. So I, I, th I think the main thing to do is find wonderful businesses. But, uh, is, is Phil Correa here? Or the, we've got the world. Yeah, there, there's, there's, there's the, the, the hero of investing. Phil, would you stand up? <laughs> Phil is, Phil is uh, 99. He wrote a book on investing in 1924. <laughs> Phil has done awfully well by, by, by finding businesses he likes and sticking with them and, and not worrying too much about what they do day to day. There's gonna be an, I, th I think there's going to be an article in the uh, Wall Street Journal about Phil on May 28th, and I, I advise you all to read it, and you'll probably learn a lot more with him by coming to this meeting. But it, it, it's that approach of buying businesses. I mean, let's just say there was no stock market, and the owner of the best business in whatever your hometown is uh, came, to, came to you and said, look it, you know, but uh, my brother just died, and he owned 20 percent of the business, and and I want somebody to to go in with me uh, uh, to buy that 20 percent. And price looks a little high, maybe, but but this is what I think I can get for it. You know, do you want to buy in? You know, I, I think if you like the if you like the business and you like the person who's coming to you, and the price sounds reasonable, and you really know the business, I, I think probably the thing to do is to take it and don't worry about how it's quoted. It won't be quoted tomorrow or next week or next month. Uh, I think people's investment would be more intelligent if it, you know, stocks were quoted about once a year, but it isn't, it isn't going to happen that way. So, uh, and if you happen to come into some, uh, some added money when, at some time when something dramatic has happened, I mean, we did well back in 1964 because American Express uh, ran into a crook. You know, we did well in 1976 because Geico. Uh, uh, Geico's managers and auditors didn't know what the loss reserve should have been the previous couple of years. So, so we've had our share of flu epidemics, but uh, you don't want to spend your life <laughs> waiting around for them.